Expect major endings in new beginnings as we get the biggest event of the month, the lunar eclipse in Libra, on Monday, March 25th. This is a south node eclipse representing a completion, change, and transformation of a chapter started in October 2023. It is quite likely that something in your life has expired and needs to be released. Let's take a closer look and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive readings. If you enjoy my content and want to show your support, please leave me a like or a comment, subscribe, and press the notification bell. It really helps, encourages you to algorithm show my content to more people, helps me grow. You also have an option of saying thank you by buying me a coffee. I really appreciate that. Before we dive in, if you want to know what the eclipse season has in store for you, you have important questions about your career, life purpose, relationships, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Now is a really great time to do that. On my website, you can also find the variety of creations I have. For example, my 2024 Astrology Planner. This one is currently discounted. You can save $10 with a coupon code down below. It is 225 pages filled with important insights, astrological transits, journaling prompts, new and full moons, lunar signs, anything you need to know to make your life easier and more flowing, right? Flowing is very on par with a Venus and Pisces ruling this eclipse. So definitely check it out. I even include symbols for good dates, romantically good dates, good dates for business, challenging transits, etc. It could be a valuable tool in your life. On my website, you can also find a variety of candles and oils that I create. All of them are carefully selected. I don't create candles nonstop. I only work with powerful transits. For example, Moon and Cancer 2 is one of my latest creations and this one captures the powerful moon in rulership right at the top of the chart it's decorated with the silver foil which is the metal of the moon it smells like moonflower nectar which is the flower of the moon it is very much attuned to the nature of the moon helping you relax distress improve your sleep improve your relationships perfect for manifesting you can use it alone or in combination with any other candle for example Venus and Libra 2 together with Moon and Cancer could be great for romantic manifestation, bringing new partnership in your life, improving existing one. This one captured Venus in rulership. We are talking about the Libra and Eclipse coming up. So if you feel like your relationships have been really shaky, definitely check out Venus and Libra. It could also be great for anyone born with their Venus in Aries, Scorpio, or Virgo. If your Venus is in the dark house, 6th, 8th, or 12th, or if your Venus is making any difficult aspects to Mars, Saturn, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune. I also have Venus and Libra without numbers. This one was created in 2022 and also captures a strong Venus, just has a different scent. The second one is Honeysuckle Jasmine and the first one is the Rose. So thank you for listening. <clears throat> thank you for being here. Let's talk about the eclipse. This is a big deal, right? We're all ready we're all excited if you are let me know down below are you excited are you scared which team are you on i am probably both <laughs> excited a little scared eclipses are unpredictable right eclipses have long had this history of surprises they are they bring like rapid developments they bring rise and fall of powerful people rise and fall of relationships, rise and fall of businesses. So it could be the time of sudden happy developments. It could be the time when something outdated in your life is falling off. So we start to feel the energy of the eclipse about a week before, and then the eclipse season lasts from March 25th until April 8th, and you can once again give it another week at the end. Basically, all of Aries season is eclipse season. So this one is happening at 5 degrees, 7 minutes of Libra, 3 a.m. Eastern on Monday, March 25th. So depending on your time zone, of course, the time will be different, but the degree will always be the same. So 5 degrees, 7 minutes, especially strong for anyone born with planets between 2 and 8 degrees of cardinal signs, Libra, Aries, Cancer, or Capricorn. 
For you, this is extra potent. I would recommend checking out which planet the eclipse is aspecting and then seeing the nature of the planet. For example, if the eclipse is aspecting your natal moon, there may be transformations related to your comfort, security, parents, your needs. And then you would look at the house ruled by the moon, which house is Cancer, and you may see the developments there too. This is not the first eclipse in Libra. This is our second eclipse out of three in Libra. We had the first eclipse in Libra on October 14th, 2023. Take a look back because the themes of Libra is the sign of partnerships. Libra is the sign of balance. Libra is the sign of fairness. So what was happening in your life in October? Have you been realizing that something is outdated? Have you been examining your relationships? Have you been exploring questions of around love and sharing and fairness? It's interesting, though, because in October we had a solar eclipse in Libra, so there could have been new beginnings, even new beginnings of understanding. This one on March 25th is a lunar eclipse in Libra, so something is closing. Like I said in the introductor, in introduction to this video, big endings, big new beginnings, right? Traditionally, eclipses are lunar eclipses. They're similar to full moon. They're more about something coming full circle, but if you're let's say your singlehood is coming full circle and ending, then that might mean that there is also a powerful new beginning if you are committing to a relationship, for example. So major changes. October started it. Here we are in the middle part. Then this October 2024, there's going to be another solar eclipse, which could be in general, you know, um, the eclipse in Libra, we have South Node in Libra. So something in the Libra sector of your chart, listen to your horoscope in a little bit, but something in the Libra sector of your chart is ending. A part of you is ending. Something is closing. A cycle is finishing, right? Maybe you are done with a relationship. Maybe you're done with a job. Maybe you're done with a city you live in, right? Something is completing so that there could be new beginnings. And then when with this eclipse, I feel like you have this opportunity to open, to clear space so that when October rolls around, a new career, a new place of living, a new relationship can enter your life. So definitely expect major developments, expect a sense to release something. Of course, we're looking at Libra, so we're looking at unhealthy relationship tendencies. Eclipses come in pairs. We have this eclipse in Libra. We get a chance to address our relationships. We get to examine what is worth and not worth keeping. And then shortly after, on April 8th, we get a solar eclipse in Aries, which is all about new beginnings, independence. Of course, it's not all simple, right? Because right around that time, Mars will be conjoining Saturn, ruling this eclipse in Aries, and new beginnings may get stalled. But very much, very sort of questions of like me versus us my values versus our values, my desires versus my family or my community. So a lot of this like kind of what's what's on your scales, right? What is worth keeping on your scales versus what is worth letting go? What is overpowering? What is taking away the balance and what needs to be released in order to create a better balance? Eclipses can be a little bit confusing, so don't expect to just like be super clear on what is coming up. A lot of times you need distance from the eclipse to understand what was being introduced, right? Maybe in October, you just felt some kind of restlessness or you felt some kind of uncertainty. And then if you now look back, you realize that that uncertainty was connected to wanting to change jobs. Um, I like, I really like that this eclipse is ruled by Venus and Pisces. The eclipse in October was ruled by Venus and Virgo. Venus and Virgo is a lot more analytical, critical, less kind of forgiving, a lot more focused on perfection, a lot more focused on the details. Venus in Pisces has the power to be more open, to be more empathetic, to be more sensitive. So whatever is completing in your life, you may at least feel a sense of this is okay. I forgive you, I forgive me, I forgive us, I am, you know, I trust that the universe has my back, it's a very Jupiterian sign, so there's more, I think, emotional maturity, there's more, also even the fact that Venus is in the same sign as Saturn, Venus conjoins Saturn on the 21st, she's still very close to Saturn, there's kind of this like 
seriousness and growth and focus on the better new beginnings i think so if you are releasing a job releasing a place of living releasing a relationship or transforming something you are at least kind of feeling happier about it another side of venus in pisces is that she can offer you a chance to compromise she can bring a chance to come to an agreement to reconcile to agree on something so it's not all gonna be bad i do think you know for the most part there is a chance to let something go and it's not always a bad thing to let something go because if you have been in a fight with someone and you have been really holding on to your perspective and feeling like it's more important for you to be right right if you've been leaning very heavily into aries libra i can suggest that maybe to create an equilibrium once again my imaginary scales in order to create an equilibrium in life you need to let some of your ego set it aside put some down release a fight release a struggle release something outdated to create more peace in your life let's not forget that pisces is a dreamer pisces like not like snaps pisces likes to dream but i think very much sort of like being realistic being rational having serious conversations addressing important questions in relationships addressing relationship karma too very much so right like i i'm thinking i can't help but think about the question of value and self-worth and self-value and how much value we place on other people's approval of us on their presence in our life i'm not saying that you know we're social creatures we need people we need people who approve of us but like when do we block ourselves like when do we stop ourselves from doing things from acting authentically because we think other people would not approve so finding that kind of self-worth and self-value is quite important here and i think out of a place of like self-understanding you can also make better relationship choices so this will be interesting i'm so curious what was happening in your life in october i know someone recently shared that they got married in october so that is very much a new beginning perhaps you had something great happen to you i think for me as a libra rising it was like a very tumultuous time And it has already been pretty tumultuous from where I'm sitting right now in early March. So I am, you know, send me well wishes, send me like happy wishes. I hope, you know, all together with like the ability of moon and cancer. I've been lighting, I've been lighting my calming candles and wearing my, you know, gemstones that are supposed to soothe me a lot. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're feeling calm, peaceful, and collected. But if you're not, that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. That's also part of life. And that's what Venus in Pisces can help us accept imperfections versus Venus in Virgo in October could have been very much about, no, it needs to be perfect. No, it needs to be a certain way. Okay, let's break it down for the 12 signs. I always recommend listening for the rising sign. I know some of you listen for your sun and your moon. There's nothing wrong with that, but rising sign horoscopes tend to be more accurate because they are written in the way the transits fall. Rising sign determines the numbers of the houses and then the transits fall in the same house for every person with that rising sign. If you use whole sign versus you can be airy sun and have your sun in the sixth in the eighth and it's not it's not necessarily as accurate so start with your rising sign but you're welcome to listen to others and compare and contrast so we are starting with aries rising the eclipse is happening in your seventh house and it is ruled by venus in your 12th what was happening in your relationships business partnerships contracts and agreements around the time of the solar eclipse in libra in october If you have started a new relationship, this eclipse could suggest completing that relationship. It could suggest that you are letting a relationship go or you are committing to it. Maybe it's the time when you get engaged, you get sort of, you know, you get engaged to a business partner. Maybe you're completing some kind of, you know, relationship chapter with 
a lawyer or an old like an ex maybe you've been sort of fighting for custody or you've been fighting for some like you've been sort of dealing with some kind of relationship question the fact that the ruler is venus in your 12th house brings attention to your self-defeating patterns in relationships there could be perhaps an ability to understand how you are shooting yourself in the foot if we're talking about relationships right like do you have the tendency to go for people that are a certain way do you tend to say no to people that are not um let's say up to standard or that don't look a certain way so you are with venus in the 12th house you're a lot more self-aware you're a lot more clear on what you want in relationships so there might also be an opportunity to get rid of the clutter let go let go of some old relationship say no to some connection that is maybe holding you back with venus in the 12th house there is also i think more interest in spirituality in astrology and healing type work in work that is more imaginative creative and like closer to heart so if we think of that and we look at the house of relationships perhaps you are exploring connections and exploring partnerships that can offer you more of that spiritual satisfaction and in the process you may need to say goodbye to some business connections or to some professional connections or any kind of like friendships or one-on-one -on -one relationships that are not serving you i also wonder with venus in the 12th house perhaps you have people in your life that are not quite healthy that are struggling with addiction um, that are struggling with sort of like escapist tendencies and you've been giving them so many shots so many chances and around this time of the lunar eclipse you're realizing that no I'm actually going to prioritize myself I'm gonna this time around I'm gonna say no and focus on me and then see what happens let me know how this resonates definitely let me know what was the October eclipse like and if you'd like to know more book a reading with me on Anastasia on my website anastasiadoesastrology.com now, if you are a lovely Taurus rising, there's a lunar eclipse in your sixth house. So we're looking at your house of work, health, service, pets, and your workload, right? Your, your sort of duties and tasks and responsibilities. And something is ending here. Take a look back at the solar eclipse in Libra we had in October 2023. Did something new start in your life? Did you start a new job? Did you start a new exercise routine? Did you find a new doctor and committed to taking better care of your health? Because around the time of the lunar eclipse, those matters can be coming full circle, you know, ending a project, completing a health battle because you overcome it letting go of a professional sort of chapter in your life the ruler is venus in the 11th so with venus in the 11th you are exploring new dreams you are perhaps taking on something new something exciting you're connecting with what feels more soulful to you and in the process you may need to say no to jobs that are not supporting that right like if there is a job if there is something you are maybe good at but it's not aligned with your future path. It's not aligned with your goals. With Venus in the 11th house, you may also feel like a strong sense of responsibility for the community, strong sense of responsibility for um, helping other people, healing other people, soothing other people. And so with the South Node eclipse in the sixth house, sorry, yeah, yeah, South Node eclipse, lunar eclipse. Um, it's a South Node lunar eclipse in your sixth house. There is an invitation to let go of something heavy set something aside there might be an invitation to examine your professional relationships and professional dynamics if you're someone who has a tendency to say yes to another work task perhaps you are starting to prioritize your well-being your mental health and you're saying no to things so examining relationships examining your priorities examining your health and making choices that are kind of supportive of your growth i think is quite likely here and please let me know how this resonates what was october like have you noticed any changes in terms of your professional life in terms of your health um even when it comes to pets or when it comes to your daily kind of work diet exercise um let me know and if you'd like to know more book a reading with me on anastasia does astrology.com 
uh, it's a good time to find out what's ahead for you or get me to look at your natal chart. Lovely time. Next, we have Gemini rising. There is a lunar eclipse in your fifth house with the ruler of Venus in the 10th. So this reads very much as inspiration. What is inspiration for you and what is not? <laughs> um, so Venus being in the 10th house, Venus just conjoined Saturn on the 21st of the, mar of the month. And then, you know, a couple of days before, a couple of days after, this energy would have been very strong. Venus in the 10th really wants to do work that is creative, that is pleasurable. It wants to work with people that are lovely. There is kind of a need to transform your professional life. There is a need for inspiration, right? And then if we're looking at the lunar eclipse happening in the fifth house, you are very much releasing something. There's like a big shift happening around questions of pleasure around questions of creativity, things that used to maybe be important to you no longer do. And so you are opening space for something new. You're maybe actually quite literally completing projects, maybe figuring things out connected to your child too, because fifth house rules children. So needing to maybe shuffle things around to open some space to pursue your creative projects. Fifth house, the lunar eclipse in the fifth um, could also have you addressing any kind of restrictions, any fears you have, I think, around acceptance, around what other people think of you, whether they will approve of you or not. There is a need to almost like, you know, release those fears and recommit, commit with like Venus and Saturn in your 10th house, commit to making your dreams a reality. Or if you feel like they're not realistic, there might be a time to let some of them go, but commit to the ones that you think are realistic. Relationships, romantic relationships with colleagues may be coming around, coming full circle. Your kind of self-defeating tendencies may be in relationships, may be important right now. Releasing connections or moving relationships to the net to the next level, I can see as well, as well as like fifth house rules sex. And with the south node eclipse here, you're maybe going through some kind of reinvention of self, and you are letting go of a need to have things sort of just like clean, pristine, and beautiful, and perhaps admitting to yourself, admitting to your partner that you have interesting quirks that you want to explore, right? You're finding that place of honesty and vulnerability. Take a look back at October 14th, 2023 to see what was happening in your life, what was happening in terms of inspiration, pleasure, romance, creativity, children, to see what might be coming full circle right now. And if you'd like to know more, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com, and we can take a look at your natal chart, the transits, and anything else that might be coming up for you. If you are a Cancer rising, there is a lunar eclipse in your fourth house, the place of home, family, and living situation. Here we're looking at completion of a chapter or continuation of a chapter that started in October 2023 when we had the solar eclipse in Libra. The ruler is Venus in your ninth house, and Venus in the ninth house brings attention to the topics of beliefs, perhaps belief in yourself, perhaps the question of life direction, your path, your journey. It could bring attention to the topics of education, travel, legal matters, writing, and publishing. And so in terms of, you know, the eclipse, right? The eclipse is ha happening in the house of home, family, and living situation. So on a very literal level, you're maybe transforming your living situation. With Venus being in the, in the ninth house, you're possibly thinking of moving. Venus in the ninth can also encourage a uh, different belief. It could encourage a sense of needing to take more control, needing to address certain self-defeating tendencies, things on many levels that you have inherited from your family, something that maybe you have learned to believe about yourself, about your relationships, about your path in life. Like, you know, believing that you really need to work every single day in order to be successful. So there might be an invitation there. Let's say your parents believe that and they told you that, or they told you that you need to be a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher or one of the big sort of things to be successful. So on some level, 
with the lunar eclipse in the fourth house, you may be releasing some of those beliefs and getting more clear on what makes you happy, what makes you comfortable. Fourth house is very much a place of comfort and security. So needing to implement some new protocols or needing to release something in the house of home, family, and living situation is quite likely. If it's new protocols, maybe there are better boundaries between you and your neighbors or your family members. If it's a release, maybe you're moving, maybe you're changing your living situation. Questions of comfort and security when it comes to writing, when it comes to teachers and people you get let close to you, when it comes to education, you know, also like questions of, of like what you want to study, what feels more authentic, what feels more comfortable, what gives you a chance to show your best self is quite likely here. But on the biggest level, you're definitely like something is ending. Something is ending in terms of your relationships with family, in terms of your family life. Like I said, with Venus in the ninth, you're maybe opening yourself up to new possibilities, new pursuits, new lands, right? You're getting ready to venture outside of your comfort zone. And also on many levels, you are kind of weighing things right now. You're weighing, you may be wondering how to achieve more, how to make more, how to succeed. And I would invite you to worry less about what other people think and instead prioritize what makes you happy, what makes you secure. Let me know what was happening in your life in October 2023 in terms of what might be coming full circle right now. And if you have questions, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, we have the lovely Leo rising with the lunar eclipse in your third house ruled by Venus in the eighth. So Venus in the eighth house is all about opportunities, contracts and agreements coming to you from other people. So Venus in the eighth may suggest that you are um, gaining new resources, maybe your partner is offering to pay some of your debts, maybe your partner is making more money, maybe you are partnering up with somebody else, you're reaching out to people for help. And the lunar eclipse in the third house will invite you to be open, I think, on some level to restructure your life as these new resources are coming in. Take a look back also at the solar eclipse in Libra we had in October, what was happening in terms of business, communication, writing, siblings, structures in your life, your overall sort of like environment, right? Like how has your environment changed? How has your communication changed? How have matters related to business changed? So on one level, there's a need to focus on fairness, right? There's a need to have some kind of conversations. Third house is very much about conversing and talking and figuring things out. So you need to be unafraid to like sort of be honest, right? As you are entering these new agreements. There is also a need, like I said, to open space for something new in your life, to open space for maybe moving in with a partner, open space for starting a business and having kind of supplies. There might be a need to rethink your relationships, your environment, your community, right? Let something go in order to have those new beginnings, in order to have more financial stability. So very kind of like serious questions. There might also be completion of a writing project, completion of a communication project. There might be changes in your business, the way you used to do things because of those upcoming new resources that are coming into your life. You're maybe, I think, I think with 8th house Venus too, there is an invitation to trust other people and to not try to handle everything on your own. As a Leo rising, you are the king or the queen. So you may have that feeling like you got to be a certain way. You got to be the noble, the leader, the I can do it all on my own. So I think with the lunar eclipse in the third house, you're very much encouraged to release old patterns around relationships to release old patterns around sort of self-reliance and old ways of doing things in order to bring new better dynamics let me know how this resonates and if you'd like to know more book a reading with me at anastasiadoesastrology.com if you are a virgo rising there is a lunar eclipse in your second house and the ruler is venus in the seventh house so this is all about 
give and take dynamics. It's about money. It's about priorities. It's about questions of self-worth in relationships. With Venus in the seventh, Venus just conjoined Saturn, you are maybe embracing a new relationship. So maybe there is a serious development. Maybe there is a business partnership that came into your life. Maybe you just signed an important contract. Maybe you got engaged, right? And the lunar eclipse in the second house could offer you a chance to rethink your finances, to rethink your priorities, right? Second house is not just money, it's also things that you value. So with this new development, you may need to shuffle your finances around. You may need to share with your partner how much money you have. You may need to be open to them kind of helping you or them maybe guiding you or, you know, if you're starting a business partnership with them, you, them, you may need to be open to letting go of control when it comes to your finances or sort of starting new kind of relationship dynamics. If there is a change in a relationship that is more about letting a relationship go or completing a business partnership, completing some kind of, um, you know, relational chapter with the lunar eclipse in your second house, you're maybe closing some kind of financial connection, right? You're maybe withdrawing your resources, completing a partnership. Maybe you're also paying off a debt. Maybe you're becoming more self-reliant, right? On many levels and like getting out of debt, paying off your credit cards. Important, like very important questions around resources and around self-reliance, right? And around questions of like, who is worth trusting? Definitely financially, but also on like a deeper level on a questions of like, who's worth sharing, who's worth getting in bed with, who's, you know, who can you trust? Like, especially if you have like financial sort of fears or concerns. Um, I can also see important developments when it comes to finances connected to relationships and business partnerships. So maybe making a big purchase you've been saving on, getting a mortgage together with your partner, um, going on a trip together, spending money on something like that, investing into your life together. And let, take a look back at October 2023 to see what was happening with your resources, with your finances, with your agreements with other people, with debts and values and to tell and let me know how has that changed in your life. And if you want to know more, book a reading with me at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com and we can take a look at your unique chart and break it down for you. If you are a Libra rising, there's a lunar eclipse in your first house and it is ruled by Venus in the sixth. Lunar eclipse in the first house is a big deal. Take a look back at October 2023. There was a solar eclipse in your first house. Solar eclipse is all about new beginnings. New beginnings that perhaps require cleansing, required you letting go of something, required you to step outside of your ego, make some compromises, sacrifices. It could have also been the time you have conceived of yourself in a different way. So now we have a lunar eclipse, which is, we're continuing, right? We're still focusing on you growing. The lunar eclipse is the time for the death of an ego. So there might be a need to release the old version of yourself, the old conception of yourself and maybe step away from like the need to be liked or the need to be appreciated or the need to be always the one who says the right thing, right? Like there's potentially a need to be more assertive, a need to be more direct, a need to, even if you think of yourself as someone who, you know, never asks a person out, there might be an invitation there to reconsider, to open yourself up to something else. The fact that Venus is the ruler of this eclipse and she's in the sixth house to me suggests that you are letting go of something connected to work you're maybe completing a professional chapter letting go of a project embracing something that will allow more space more freedom more flow in life right something more spiritual maybe coming into your life you may be becoming a reiki practitioner a yoga teacher an astrologer, something like that is likely. You're maybe also realizing where have you been burning the candle at both ends, where are things feeling exhausting, right? Especially if you're dealing with some kind of health matter, um, you know, doesn't mean something bad will happen to you, not at all, but like I'm a Libra rising. I had COVID in January, I had a cold in February. So, 
you know, there's maybe an invitation for me even to slow down. So I think the, this, this is a South Node eclipse. It's all about cleansing and emptying and releasing and slowing down and taking it easy. So a really good advice at this time would be to go on a diet or if you can't, you know, if you can't like diet for a day, don't do it, especially if your health doesn't allow you. But like throw something out, get rid of the old things, declutter, open space around you so that you can welcome new beginnings when we get the next solar eclipse in Libra in October 2024. And that would be an interesting one. So, <laughs> so I'm excited about this. Let me know what October was like. Let me know how you're feeling if you are my Libra rising sister, or brother, or sibling. And if you'd like to know more, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Check out my offerings. This candle, Moon and Cancer 2, has been very much a life savior for me. <laughs> um, it's not that dramatic. I'm joking, but it definitely helps, like, you know, release some of the tension. Next, if you are a lovely Scorpio rising, there is a lunar eclipse in your 12th, 12th house and it is ruled by Venus in your 5th house. So with Venus in the 5th house, you are in a creative place. You are maybe working on some creative project. You're maybe exploring what brings pleasure to you. You're maybe focusing on your sexual relationship. You're maybe exploring questions related to parenthood thinking about becoming a parent. Um, you know, we just had a new moon in your house of parenthood. So conception of something has likely happened, right? Or you're thinking of conceiving of something. So the lunar eclipse happening in your 12th house suggests that there is a need to look at your subconscious and ask important questions, right? I think there might be a need to admit something to yourself. Um, perhaps it has to do with self-doubt, perhaps it has to do with perfectionism or, you know, sort of a need to be approved by other people, any kind of something, something that blocks you, right? Like something that slows you down when it comes to love. Maybe you, maybe you're worried to be too vulnerable, right? When it comes to love, something that stops you when it comes to sex. Maybe you feel like, you know, you have a certain image to upkeep and Instead, there is an opportunity here to be open and to like experiment and to let your freaky flag fly, right? <laughs> like to sort of connect with your connect with yourself, especially if you feel like you've been kind of blocked in that area lately. There might also be a need to examine how you're stopping yourself when it comes to your creativity, when it comes to your passion project. Like, are you sort of like, you know, are you trying to get everything ready? Are you trying to get all the knowledge you can possibly have because in the process you might miss the opportunity to present your work to take action to express yourself to do something creative and imaginative or even to become a parent right like with venus in the fifth house so the lunar eclipse in the 12th i think on one level is asking you to release these self-defeating notions it may also encourage you to get in touch with your desire to be a healer, with your desire to be an astrologer, a mystic, a spiritual imaginative type person, and perhaps, you know, go for it finally. And any kind of tendency to not speak up, not shake, rock the boat when it comes to relationships, when it comes to even your relationships with your children might need to be released and as in the process, better relationships may be born. Let me know what was happening in your life in October 2023 when we had the solar eclipse in Libra in your 12th house. And if you'd like to know more, book a reading with me at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Next, we have Sagittarius rising. If you are a Sagittarius rising, there's a lunar eclipse in your 11th house ruled by Venus in the 4th. So... This lunar eclipse is a completion of a chapter or a continuation of a chapter that got started with a solar eclipse in Libra in October 2023. What was happening in your life? 11th house is the place of friendships, networks, hopes and dreams, your social life. So if you have started some kind of connection, you know, maybe you have started a relationship with people who are more spiritual, people who feel more aligned with you, this eclipse could be the time you decide to go in business with them or you decide to make that partnership to celebrate the six months of knowing them. 
There might also be the time your like relationships might be transforming because you are getting more in touch with what you truly want, what you truly value. With Venus being the ruler in the fourth house, for some of you, you may be moving Venus in the fourth. You're maybe choosing more pleasant environment, more pleasant surroundings, more beautiful place to live, right? Like you may be moving to an island, like moving to Hawaii, to live in Hawaii. And so your friendships will transform as a result. You may need to say goodbye to some friendships. Venus in the fourth could also suggest that you're getting more in touch with what makes you feel secure, what makes you feel comfortable, what makes you happy. And so in the process, certain projects certain dreams may need to be released certain even like you know social like certain social responsibilities certain kind of like image you project in the world of like always down to have fun always sort of go with the flow type personality may need to be rethought and released venus in the fourth can also bring attention to like family dynamics family karma and how what you have learned as a kid, what you have learned from your parents might still be impacting your social life, your friendships, um, your image in the world. And there is like, I think a need to figure out what is authentic, what is truthful versus what is just a mask that you're putting on to be liked by other people potentially. Let me know what October was like. Did any of this come up in October? How are you feeling right now? And if you want to know more, if you want personal guidance, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. If you are a Capricorn rising, there is a lunar eclipse in your 10th house of career, status, and reputation ruled by Venus in the third. So with Venus in the third, you are discovering new passions. You are discovering new talents. You're going through changes that involve starting sorry, <laughs> that involves starting a business, that involves teaching or graduating, that involves blogging, writing, editing. There is like a major shift happening in terms of what you value, what you like to do, what you know, right? And as that, that is happening, there is a lunar eclipse in your house of career. So what does it mean? There is an ending there. There is a chapter closing in your professional life. It doesn't mean you're getting fired, but it does mean that something is transforming. Maybe you are letting go of a job in order to start a business. Maybe you're letting go of a job so that you can have more of a free lifestyle. Maybe you're becoming a free, freelancer, right? Maybe you are... Um, connecting with siblings and doing something like some kind of business together with your sibling. Take a look back at October 2023 because we had a solar eclipse in your house of career around this time. It is very possible that, you know, if, if in October you started a new job or you started a new project right around this time, you might be ending it. There might also be a possibility that around October you have realized that you no longer love what you do. So it's time to open space for new beginnings. Definitely examine, I think, with Venus in the third house, examine what brings you pleasure. Examine your skills, your gifts, your talents. There might also be like a need to update some of your education to maybe even move. And so the professional life might be changing because you're moving, because you're graduating, because you're learning new things, starting a business, anything like that. And if you'd like to know more, book a reading with me on AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com, my website. Uh, we'll take a look at your chart and tell you what this might be meaning. Next, we have Aquarius rising. If you are in Aquarius rising, there's a lunar eclipse in your ninth house and it is ruled by Venus in your second house. So here we're looking at the house of education and the house of money and the house of travel and the house of money, right? Like Venus in the second house could suggest that you are craving work that is more creative, that is more in partnership, that is more aligned with what you enjoy doing. So lunar eclipse in the ninth could suggest a need to maybe switch majors and change directions in education. It could suggest that you maybe need to move in order to have more opportunities and more pleasure, right? Like lunar eclipse in the ninth house could bring graduation, it could bring maybe finishing a contract with someone um, if you're involved in some kind of legal matter, you may be letting go of that legal matter in order to have more space to do things that you want to do or completing some kind of legal battle. Very much, I think, 
there could, like I said, there could definitely be physical changes that involve a move, graduation, um, finishing a manuscript that you owe to someone so that you have more space to pursue new ones. Um, but it could also be very spiritual. Ninth house represents your beliefs. It represents your values. It represents... There is an invitation here, I think, to not be afraid to say no to something, to choose things with the upcoming solar eclipse in your third house, to choose things that are pleasant, that are enjoyable, that feel kind of right to you. With Venus in the second house, I think you are also going through this sort of shift in values and in priorities. And like I said, on some level, you're maybe kind of figuring out how you want to spend your money, what you want to spend your money on, who you want to spend your money with. So in the process of this inner understanding, deeper self-awareness. You may need to have some tough conversations. You may need to talk about your values and be like, this is what I believe. This is what's important to me. Let's come to an agreement. Let's discuss this. Uh, perhaps there is also a need to get education in order to be more professionally successful or maybe release some kind of course of study if you feel like it's not fulfilling, it's not sort of helping you. And yeah, for many of you, I can also see this as like some kind of move, some kind of relocation, changes in the home that encourage you to either spend money on them or make money from them. Maybe you're starting to work from home or something like that. But yeah, like very kind of like philosophical ending of a chapter when it comes to your beliefs, when it comes to your ideals, when it comes to your place in the world and opportunities to reinvent yourself that perhaps offer you more money. Let me know what was what was it like in October 2023. We had a solar eclipse in Libra, which could have introduced a lot of important questions, maybe suggested some changes coming your way versus right now, it's like the second act where things might change. There might be some kind of twist and ending. And if you'd like to know more, book a reading with me on my website, AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. Now we have the lovely Pisces rising. So there is a lunar eclipse in your eighth house and it is ruled by Venus in your first house. So Venus in the first house brings a lot of attention to you. She brings attention to your appearance, to your style, to your goals, to your self-understanding, to your desires, to, to your kind of like pleasure. It encourages you to do things in life that feel really kind of hap make you happy. There's also Saturn here. So there there's also like a lot of realism, a lot of deep questions, a lot of deep sort of insights into oneself. And the lunar eclipse in the eighth house is... Oh, sorry, my phone gave me a message. <laughs> the lunar eclipse in the eighth house is calling you to let go of debts. So on one level, there might be a chance to pay off a debt to figure out a better financial strategy to release something that's holding you back, right? Like eighth house is any agreements, any dependencies you have on other people. So it could be, you know, a business connection. It could be a friendship. It could be a relationship, something that you feel like is dragging you down and draining you instead of being life affirming and satisfying. Lunar eclipse in the eighth house, like I said, could be the time you're paying off a debt. You're maybe feeling more financially stable. You're feeling more financially secure. Take a look at October 2023, what was happening in your life at that time. Have you realized that something, some kind of contract, some kind of relationships, some kind of you know financial situation is outdated? Um, with, with the lunar eclipse in the eighth house, there might be opportunities to be more assertive, be more direct, find better balance. You know, you're not necessarily releasing relationships, but you are needing to have some heavy conversations and figure out better flow, better kind of agreements. You're maybe healing. That's another thing with Venus in the first house. You're maybe realizing what you desire. And then with the lunar eclipse in the eighth house, there's a need to let go of some fears, let go of some frustrations and both, you know, financially letting things go, letting go of debts, but also internally, spiritually releasing outdated tendencies, outdated behaviors, becoming more clear about your own kind of tendency to maybe engage in behaviors that are not healthy for you. 
this is it i hope this eclipse brings all of us some good things i hope it feels happy and enjoyable and if you need some additional support check out my magic candle shop get yourself moon and cancer too look how pretty it is look how shiny <laughs> and i really hope it's a good one for you i'll talk to you very very soon bye